This is Inspiring Careers with your host, Ingrid Centurion. We're gonna talk about fascinating technologies that will impact your future. Meet inspiring entrepreneurs and people that are making huge differences in the community and around the world. We're gonna share career and life lessons of inspiration and success. Our mission is to inspire our viewers to make a better life for themselves by sharing our stories, our interviews, and documentaries. Please stay tuned as we have incredible guests coming up. I'm on Sober Grid. I'm on Sober Grid. I am on Sober Grid. I am on Sober Grid. I'm on Sober Grid. As with any other chronic disease, you need to give people the tools with which to manage their condition. So we see Sober Grid as being one of those tools. So we truly have a global community of people in recovery. Considering that 21.5 million Americans aged 12 or older have a substance abuse disorder, and 40 to 60% of those who seek treatment will relapse. Addiction is a serious issue. SoberGrid is making a global difference. They've created an application that facilitates sober living and recovery. SoberGrid is a new geosocial app for the iPhone and Android that allows sober people to locate and connect with other sober people nearby and across the world. Today, we have Chris Pesch, the Chief Operating Officer of SoberGrid with us. Chris, tell us how you joined SoberGrid on this mission and your story. I'm in recovery from addiction myself, so this is something that's touched me personally. Um, and in the back of my mind, I knew that I wanted to find a way to get involved to help others in this space. Um, but I wanted to use my, my business background, my skill set. I was reading the Boston Business Journal, actually, and I read about this guy, Bo Mann, who had received initial funding to get a company off the ground in this Sober Grid app. Um, and so I thought, here's the perfect opportunity to both help other people in recovery, as well as get involved with a startup business and use my skill set. Bo started the company. He's, uh, he's an entrepreneur. He started some other successful businesses, but he's in recovery too. And he was traveling for work. He was at the Sundance Film Festival. And he was surrounded by all the partying that you have at a, at a film festival. And so he wanted to connect with other sober people in recovery. Um, and he was shocked when there wasn't an app for that, right? He thought, there, yo, there must be an app to connect sober people, and there wasn't. And there are apps to connect so many other groups. So Bo set about to build it, really, initially just as a, a project on his own dime. Um, and things started to grow and, and people who were also passionate about it started to come together around him and the company. I reached out cold to Bo. I just sent him an email and here's this you know, busy CEO of a startup company trying to get it off the ground. And sure enough, he responded to me. And so we met in person and I told him of my interest and my, my skill set and we started working together and you know at this point we had no money so you know volunteering time and and luckily things just grew from there um, we were fortunate to get some great advisors early on one of our advisors is uh, bill weld who's the former governor of massachusetts and so you know bill's been a great champion of ours and he said bo what you're building here you need to make this a real company there's a lot of promise here to to help people and to do well as a company by doing good. Um, and so, you know, with, with Bill kind of urging us on, we raised money and, and the team started to grow. And, and so we've built the team and right now we have about 12 folks uh, working on the team. Wow, so I love that you went after what you wanted. I that, did. That was a cold call. Yes. You're a co-founder. So your cold email ended up into entrepreneur, co-founder of an incredible company with people who are so passionate right. about what they're doing. How does someone download the app and use it for their benefit? So we have over 80,000, uh, actually 83,000 now members, individual members using the app. The app is free to the end user um, and we want to keep it that way. And it's available for both uh, Apple phones as well as Android um, and can be downloaded on the uh, Apple Store or the Google Play Store. So just search for Sober Grid. You know, people have just by, by searching on the net and uh, searching in the App Store, people have found us and downloaded us in countries across the world. Um, and they're active members of the communities. 
So on, on the left is what you see when you first open up the app and it's the news feed. Um, and so on this news feed with this global community, we have people sharing 24-7 um, and they're sharing positive or inspirational things about their recovery or they're reaching out for support and they're able to get that support right away. There's a lot of negativity on other social networks and we hear from a lot of our members when they got into recovery, they had to detox their social network because all their drug dealers were on Facebook or all their drinking buddies were on Facebook and there was just this, this you know, kind of negative social influences that would pull them back to, to relapse or to those negative behaviors. And so we, what we hear from people that they really like about Sober Grid is that here's this network where everyone is rowing in the same direction, right? People get it because they've experienced it. And therefore people feel comfortable sharing, getting support from other folks, um, you know, reaching out and putting things out there that they wouldn't necessarily put on a Facebook, right? Because maybe they're connected with uh, their family or colleagues or people who don't know that they're either still struggling or that they're in recovery. Well, the important thing I think is when they're asking for support on the on the news feed there, they're getting advice from people who've been there. Right. So on Facebook, you're sharing your down day and these are people who are not substance abuse users and don't understand what it feels like. They don't understand right. how hard it is. So they may not be able to offer you the advice that you need. Mm -hmm. That's the great benefit. Of, they've been there, they've done that. You know, Let me give you some advice. This is what I did and this is what helped me. I think that's such a great feature that you have. Exactly, it's really a tool to facilitate that. We surveyed our, our user base. Um, you know, who are you, why are you using the app? And roughly half of the people who responded said they were new to recovery or still struggling, they, and they were primarily on Sober Grid to get support because they wanted help. But, you know, another half of the folks who responded said they were in longer term recovery, so three years, five years, 10 years, and their primary reason for being on the app was to help others, um, really to offer support to newcomers as part of their own program of recovery as part of how they ensure their own sobriety. At the bottom of the screen when you download the app, you'll see this, um, these different icons. Now the one on the left takes you to the grid functionality, that's where the name comes from, and it's a grid of other people around you by how far away they are geographically because we use geolocation. So you can find and connect with people both digitally uh, but also in person. People from the entire global community of members are constantly posting, responding to one another, interacting. The chat icon there is for both one-on-one -on -one and, and group chat. It's a view of all the other members around you who are on there and, and able to connect one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, you can remain completely anonymous if you choose, or you can also upload your photo and, and your name. Um, and this really enables people to connect one-on-one -on -one as well as filter, right? If I'm uh, a woman in recovery and I feel most comfortable connecting with other women, I could filter by women or even in my age demographic. You can also, also filter by city. Um, so one example of a use case for that, I was traveling for work, I was representing the company in Ottawa, and this is like two years ago now, and I wanted to connect with other people in Ottawa to line up some AA meetings to go to before I went, because um, I was going away from my support network. And I was able, I, I, you know, I thought, oh, gee, I wonder if people are going to be using the app in Ottawa. And I filtered the grid, and sure enough, there were plenty of members already using the app in Ottawa. So I was able to reach out, connect with them, and make friends. And I got there, and I already had meetings lined up to go to, friends lined up. They took me up to dinner. Um, so it was a great kind of use, personal use case. Your home icon takes you to your profile, which you can edit and upload photos. Uh, as well as where you can access your sobriety counter, where you can track your sobriety time and milestones. That big plus button is where you can uh, share content to the newsfeed, um, as well as to put out a, a call for help in the form of what we call a burning desire. So putting out a call for help to the community around you and letting them know you're in need of support. The relapse rate, even after people receive treatment for addiction, and only a small percentage of, of the people who need treatment will receive it, the relapse rate approaches 90% within a year. And that's because addiction is a chronic disease. So we, we put that feature in almost from the get-go because we heard from so many 
members and we knew from personal experience that when somebody's struggling, it's very hard to reach out and ask for help. Um, it's very hard. We hear that the phone weighs a million pounds. They're right. struggling. It's very difficult to reach out to a support network even if you have a support network. Or what if it's late at night, right, and people right. don't always pick up the phone. So we wanted to give people the ability just to put out a call for help to others around them. And it works because, as we discussed earlier, so many folks are on this app to provide support to others. If you click on the Burning Desire button in the app with, with the flame icon, uh, it'll highlight your post in red, it'll highlight your profile in the grid in red, and it will send push notifications to others nearby to let them know, hey, I'm, I'm in need of some support, reach out to me. I've heard that you know recovery is a lifetime you're always in recovery. You're, you're always they, could they, have a setback or a relapse. So well, they you, say in AA, uh, w once you've become a pickle, you can never go back to being a cucumber, <laughs> right? So I mean, that's that's true at least for me. Is that I, you know, I need to remain abstinent. I can't pick up a drink or a drug because I'll find myself right back where I was when I first sought help. So we, you know, we're fortunate enough in that on our advisory board, we have one of the leading addiction researchers in the country, Dr. Warren Bickle. Um, and I'm interacting with addiction professionals every day. And one of the things that I continually hear from them is this app is fantastic because it facilitates this peer support that's been shown to be effective and that's so critical for so many people's recovery. Um, just really this idea of being able to connect with others who get it and others who have the experience and can help. Um, and so what we've done and what, what professionals are recognizing is we're, we're breaking down the barriers to getting that support 24-7 whenever people need it. We recognize that there are a ton of great nonprofit groups out there that, that are doing tremendous work to um, really advocate for, for addiction recovery and for more resources to help people, um, to end the stigma. And so thus far, we've partnered with um, two organizations uh, facing addiction as well as young people in recovery that are both focused on the mission of helping people in, in recovery. Um, and we've also partnered with a number of bloggers uh, who, who wanted to reach our audience and we wanted to get their message out. Uh, we partnered with um, Omar Pinto, who runs the Share podcast, which is a great addiction recovery podcast. When we partnered with Omar, um, we created a group for him within the SoberGrid app so he could host uh, people who followed his podcast right in SoberGrid and connect with them and engage with them. Um, so we're definitely open to partnering with other organizations with, with, with a shared mission um, and we can help get the word out on our app um, and perhaps create a group for them within the app. What has been some of the challenges you faced as as a entrepreneur and an initial startup company mm -hmm. money <laughs> <laughs> you know to to grow a company requires capital right to get the word out to to successfully market i mean now granted we run a pretty lean operation um, and we've been able to leverage uh, social media and that organic growth and even features within the app giving people the ability to invite their friends and their contact networks to help spread the word and grow um, but you know at the outset uh, definitely funding was was a challenge and uh, you know I was going from a, a large company where my marketing budget was 30 million to can we keep the lights on next <laughs> week right um, so it was it was really a crash course wow. in in startup company and uh, but we've we managed to we managed to keep the lights on and we managed to grow and, and get to where we are now. People, of course, they don't want to share that they have someone in their family that might have a substance abuse problem or they themselves have a problem that they can't kick. So that's a problem and a challenge. This app, though, allows you to remain anonymous mm -hmm. if you choose to, and it's free. So we need to we need to get this out there and we need to help you accomplish your mission of getting more people on board with this uh, problem that they have. How are you facing the younger community and what do we need to do to get them on the app? We definitely built this um, with the the youth community in in mind, right? Because there's so much um, focus now as there as there should be on the opioid epidemic, which you know skews to uh, affects a younger demographic. 
Um, and we were thinking about it, and in talking about those barriers, right, that keep people from accessing support, um, even with with twelve step programs, for example, if there's only an AA meeting in somebody's town, now I'm I'm a I'm a big proponent of AA, um, but we recognize that maybe younger kids, if I'm an 18 year old struggling with heroin addiction, I might be hesitant, um, and yet where do they live? They live in the mobile space. So this is a way for them to kind of get their foot in the door, right? And, and just start reaching out for help and connecting with people and seeing what works for others. Part of creating the app was to create a tool where somebody even in their, you know, the privacy of their living room, um, maybe addiction is a disease of isolation. So maybe they don't know that there's help out there. They feel like they're the only one struggling with this issue. It's pretty powerful to be able to pull up a tool and you know we have the geolocation functionality on the app and you can say wait a minute I'm not alone I'm surrounded by all these other people around me who are dealing with and overcoming the same challenges that that I'm facing so you recently were awarded a grant we were actually uh, we were thrilled to to we applied for uh, grants uh, small business innovation research grants from both the National Institute of Health and the National Science Foundation and we were lucky enough to be awarded both uh, grants from both agencies. What we're doing with these projects is they're, they're facilitating uh, us to really dig into some additional features and functionality that are going to be cutting edge. Uh, one of the things we're looking at is how we can leverage artificial intelligence um, to hopefully be able to predict relapse before it occurs and if we can do that then we can think about what can we do to intervene to prevent it. Where do you see SoberGrid five years from now? Uh, hopefully with uh, as many of the uh, millions of Americans in recovery or still struggling uh, as members. Um, there's, I think, 45 million Americans uh, with, uh, who are personally impacted with, with substance abuse and addiction. Um, about half of those are in recovery, about half of those are still struggling or trying to get better. As people across the country start using SoberGrid, then the support that's available for others just expands exponentially. You, you can't do it alone. I certainly couldn't. Uh, and I would say, you know, you really have to reach out and, and get help. You know, if, if you don't have a, a support network available, uh, go to a meeting or reach out on Sober Grid or find a community that's having success in recovery and connect with them because people are there and they're willing to help and they want to help. We are and we want to, we want to remain the largest uh, mobile app community of people in recovery from addiction or people looking to get help. Alcoholism and chemical dependency are chronic progressive diseases. Abstinence is the only first step in recovery. However, there are tools that can help someone in recovery. SoberGrid's vision is to reach sober people in every city state and country across the globe and I'd like you to help us on that mission. SoberGrid is an application and our tool that can help people avoid becoming a statistic. Please share this tool with anyone you know facing addiction. SoberGrid.com. You can connect with them on all social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and make your connection. Thank you so much, Chris, for being on the show and everyone on the SoberGrid team. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.